Hey, people, hi. It's nice to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. If you are new to this group, then we are doing a series of devotionals in the book of 2 Timothy. This is the book that Paul wrote to his little sidekick who is going to be taking over from him because Paul knew that his pending death was just around the corner. So he writes these words of deep purpose and incredible meaning. And with uh, this is real deathbed talk and you don't mess around when you're speaking on your deathbed. And so Paul is conveying some incredibly important truths to, to Timothy. And he aligns this and he likens the Christian experience to being a couple of things. He talks about the Christian being like an athlete is the one that we're looking at right now. And you find that in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, there's a parallel passage about being an athlete. There's a couple that Paul uses. But the one that I want to just focus on today about being an athlete in the context of being a believer today. He says this is what an athlete does. He beats his body to make it a slave. You see, the, the body is a, is a great slave, but is a terrible master. And when we are mastered by the flesh, when we are mastered by our own evil desires or our own desires that may not necessarily be evil, but there are fleshly desires, we find that this can draw us away from the purpose and the kingdom ultimately of God. So Paul is warning us about the flesh. He's saying to us, we need to beat the heck out of that thing. He's saying we need to beat the heck out of the thing that will submit to us and not us submit to it. Now, when we look at the opposition to the flesh, we talk about faith. And faith, again, is an athletic kind of a term because faith requires exercise. If you want to get stronger, you go to the gym and you exercise your muscles and you take a good diet and hopefully between the diet and the exercise, you develop some, some strength. And Paul's usage of this term is, is a great and very simple parallel for us today in our lives where in order to grow in faith, we need to do the same things for faith that we do for our bodies. We need to exercise our faith. That means we got to get out there. We got to live by faith. We got to take faith seriously. We've got to apply faith to every area of our lives. We've got to apply faith to the area of our finance. We've got to apply faith to the area of our church ministry. We've got to apply faith to the area of our relationships, believing God that God will answer our prayers as we trust Him by faith. Faith strengthens us. It exercises that muscle that when a time comes that we need big faith, we don't go running off looking for big faith when we've only done no exercise or we've, we've only got little faith. Faith needs to grow and faith can grow. First of all, we're trusting God for the little things. We're trusting Him for our daily bread. We're trusting Him for His protection and His provision and all of those beautiful things. But those are issues of little faith. But when we start trusting God for the big things, of deep prayers and where we're trusting God for the things that we know we can use for His kingdom, then all of a sudden faith takes on a completely new look. I hope that we will exercise our faith. In conjunction with exercising our faith, we got to, like we do physically, be careful what you eat, people. Be careful what you do. You know, social media is dominating our lives right now. I read a statistic this last week that says that the average teenager spends nine hours a day on his cell phone or her cell phone. And you say, well, what does that look like? Well, what do you, first of all, you've got to say, well, what is that nine hours taking away from other things that he could be doing or she could be doing? They could be building relationships. They could be exercising. They could be having fun out there. Instead, their eyes are glued to the social media thing. We are not feeding ourselves very well if that's the case. Now, I'm not denying that the, our phones are, are necessary evils, but I've got to tell you, they can feed the wrong side of who we are. And we can end up having a diet of what somebody else says or what somebody else thinks, and none of them are really credible in the main at the end of the day. So let's look what we exercise. Let's exercise our faith. Let's be careful that we take a decent diet, a diet of decent sleep, a diet of decent reading material, a diet of de decent relationship building, 
Those are the dietary things that are needed for every believer in order to grow. You know, I, I've kind of I'm worried about the teenage generation right now. I'm worried about every generation actually, because I see so much peace, so many people just going completely crazy on their cell phones. You go to an airport and you watch people, you will barely in a crowd of a hundred people find two people who aren't looking at that thing. You go to, a, uh, I've seen kids in movies or watching TV, doing watching their cell phone at the same time. And I'm thinking, what is happening here? You know, while they're watching that, I know it's my hobby horse, I'm sorry, but uh, let's make sure what we eat, let's make sure what we feed into our minds and make sure that it's healthy and that it's good. And for goodness sake, let's get out there and do some physical exercise. Maybe that's what we need, but certainly every one of us needs some spiritual exercise. Let's let that faith grow. It's not going to grow without it. Have a good day, people. Bye-bye.